Kid, and today's topic is... Electricity! Did you know that there are two different types of electricity? It's true! Let me tell you about them! Static electricity is just potential energy, like a thundercloud, all stored up and ready to strike. Now, take this tunnel slide for an example. Have you ever gone down one? And if your hair stands up, well, that is static electricity. The energy that I created by rubbing my body against this tunnel slide created friction or potential energy. And how do I release that potential energy? Just kidding. Current electricity is just kinetic energy or energy that's actively moving. So when a thundercloud finally releases a lightning bolt, the stored up energy or static electricity changes into a flowing energy. And that's what we call current electricity. Now here's the thing. Lightning can be very dangerous. In fact, it can catch things on fire. A long time ago, many people believed that lightning was a punishment from God until somebody named Benjamin Franklin came along. Did you know that Benjamin Franklin was not only an inventor, but he also had many different jobs? Cool, huh? Besides helping to write the Constitution, he was a candle maker, he ran a printing press, he was a postmaster general, and even became a fireman. Being a fireman was one of the reasons why Ben was so interested in electricity. At that time, many of the tall buildings in Benjamin Franklin's city, they got struck by lightning easily, and Ben wanted to know why. So one day during a thunderstorm, Ben tried an experiment. He put a key on a kite string and flew the kite into the air. When lightning struck the kite, it traveled down the string and charged the key. When Ben touched the key, there was a spark. <coughs> so then Ben realized that lightning was electricity. Even though it was exciting news, it's important to remember how dangerous this experiment was. Do not try this experiment at home. I almost died from the electric shock. After that, Ben invented the lightning rod. So if lightning strikes, it hits the rod instead of the roof. Lots of other cool stuff has been invented by Benjamin Franklin's great discovery, like the telegraph. Before we had telephones, a man named Samuel Morse invented the telegraph key. Okay, here's the thing. When you press the key, electricity goes through it and makes a sound. When you let up the key, electricity stops and the sound stops too. To be able to send a message to people with this little telegraph, Mr. Morse created a special alphabet called the Morse code. A short sound like this represents a dot. A long sound like this represents a dash. What's one of the most popular inventions made using electricity? That's right. It's the light bulb. Did you know that Thomas Edison wasn't the first person to invent the light bulb? It's true! Joseph Swan was the first person to invent the light bulb. But he used a carbon rod, so it didn't last very long. Finally, about 20 years later, Thomas Edison invented a better version of the light bulb. Just like this one. Thomas Edison worked very hard. In fact, his assistants wanted to quit, but he persevered. He said, we've tried a thousand things that won't work. The trick is going on to a thousand and one. And here with us today, we have... James Afton. I like to call him Grandpa. Can you tell us the three basic components of electricity? Sure. Uh, voltage, resistance, and current. Those are three basics. Okay, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us what the difference is between Thomas Edison's light bulb, like the ones that we have today, mm -hmm. and Joseph Swan's light bulb? Sure. The main difference is that Edison's bulb had no air in it, it was in a vacuum, and uh, Swan's was not. 
So how do you get electricity into the bulb to, you know, make it glow? Okay, well you have to build a, a simple, what they call a simple series circuit. In order for the light bulb to illuminate or light up, you need electrons flowing from the battery. We have to close the switch to allow the current to flow from the battery, which is the voltage supply, through the circuit or wires and to the bulb, which is the resistance, and then back to the positive side of the battery. So now we're going to build a working model of a complete series circuit using snap circuits. What Grumpel is holding in his hands is called a base grid. Now this base grid is when you put all your thing, your snap circuits <laughs> onto here. You put all your snap circuits on this. And our three major components for a series circuit, a complete series circuit, were what? Voltage, mm -hmm. resistance, and current. So what are we going to use for our voltage? What's that? Um, battery? Battery, yeah. This is Since we're creating a series circuit using a light bulb, we need a socket to hold the bulb in. Now we have to screw the bulb in there. Anybody got a bulb? Bulb? Okay. You want to put the bulb in there for us? Take a look at this picture of this series circuit using three bulbs. And this shows three light bulbs in series. If you notice, the current passes through each of the light bulbs one after the other. So what happens if one of the light bulbs will break? The other bulbs won't work. So what happens if a bulb burns out? It opens the circuit so all the lights are out. I remember at Christmas time that the lights on our tree just wouldn't work. And my mom had to go through each one to figure out which was the broken bulb. Some lights are set up using parallel circuits, and even if one burns out, you always have a complete series path through each of the other bulbs. Well, too bad those Christmas lights weren't parallel. Can you think of any other circuits around the house that use electricity and a closed circuit to work? Hmm, I think, I j just stay here. I think I'm going to go look for some. Okay? All right. So the series circuit that we learned about today, it uses same series circuit in this lightsaber. Flip the switch on and it produces light. This plant is another example, but instead of just light, it also produces motion. <laughs> the alarm clock is also another example for, well, electricity producing sound. Now, a toaster is an example of, well, heat. Electricity producing heat. Hmm. Hmm. Electricity tastes really good. So good. Did you find a lot of things around the house? Yeah, I did. And it was really fun, too. Well, so that's about all the time that we have today. I'd like to thank my guests for coming over and teaching us how to build a circuit. Uh, and next time, when you use electricity, just think how lucky you are that somebody shared their bright idea. Well, I hope you learned a lot. See you next time. Bye. She likes science and aeroplanes, singing songs and playing games, telling you what's on his brain. That's Kid the Kid! That's Kid the Kid! To request show topics, just email me at kidthekid1 at yahoo.com.